Hello, this is Robert Thomas with Photo Blog Stop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add a moon to a landscape image. This can be a very simple technique to apply, and the results can be very realistic. We'll be using Photoshop's blending options to not only place the moon into this landscape, but we'll also be bringing the clouds in front of the moon. As you can see, I already have an image open in Photoshop. I'll be placing the moon into this image. I'll click on File and Place, select the moon that I want to place into this document. On a Mac, I'll hit the Return key. On Windows, I would hit the Enter key to accept my changes. Press the V key to select the Move tool and move the moon to an appropriate location. Now, I don't want to get too far off track here, but I do want to mention that you could use Photoshop's blending modes to remove the background of this moon. For example, I have a dark background around this moon. I could change the blend mode to one of the lighten modes, such as lighten or screen, and that would effectively remove that background. The same logic applies if I had a light background around the moon. I could use one of the darken modes, such as darken or multiply, but I don't want to do that in this tutorial. So let's leave the blend mode set to normal. And instead, I'm going to show you a different way to work using something called luminance blending. To begin, double click on the moon layer to the right of the name. This opens the layer style dialog box. Here we'll be working with two sliders, the this layer and the underline layer. To remove the background from the moon, Drag the left-hand slider to the right slowly, just until the background disappears. Now let's zoom into the image. So on a Mac, you can hold down the Command key. On a PC, that would be Control, and click on your image to enlarge it. If your image is like mine, you'll see you do have some artifacts remaining here around the moon. To remove those, we're going to make some fine-tuning adjustments to the this layer changes we made. If you look at the adjustment slider we moved, it has a line going down the middle of it. And that suggests that this adjustment can be split into two pieces. To split it into two pieces, on a Mac, hold down Option. On Windows, hold down the Alt key. And click on one half of this adjustment and drag away. Once it's free, you can release the keyboard key and continue to drag that slider until those artifacts disappear and you get the results you're looking for. Alright, now before I click on OK to accept my changes, I want to explain to you a little bit about what's happening here. This first adjustment is the number 41 above here. And that's saying that for this image, any luminance values that are 41 or below should become transparent. The second adjustment here is 95, and that's saying any luminance values that are 95 or greater should be displayed. They should be opaque. The area between these two adjustments, 41 and 95, is a transition from transparent to opaque. All right, let's click OK to accept our changes. Now I'm going to zoom out of the image a bit, so I'm going to hit the Z key and release it, and then on the Mac I'll hold down the Option key, Windows, that would be Alt, and click a couple times. And um, for the image that I'm working on, that moon is just a little bit too big for this image, so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command-T, that's Control-T on a PC, to open up the free transform. Here I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to click on a Control handle and drag until the moon is the size that I want. Once I find the appropriate size, I'll release the keyboard key and the mouse button, and on a Mac I'll hit return, on a PC I'll hit enter to accept my changes. I'm going to select the move tool one more time to reposition the moon. Alright, now this 
looks fine, but it does look artificial, and that's because we don't have any clouds in front of the moon. So to get those clouds in front, we're going to go back into the Layer Options dialog box, and we're going to make some more changes. So double-click on the moon layer. This time, we'll be working with the Underline layer slider. And here, I'm going to drag the leftmost slider slowly to the right until some clouds begin to appear over the moon. And that looks about right. Now you can see we have some harsh transitions between those clouds and the surface of the moon. So to smooth those out, I'm once again going to split this adjustment in half. So on a Mac, you can hold down Option. On a PC, that would be Alt. Click and drag one of these halves away. And continue to move that slider until you get the desired results. Once you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click on OK to accept your changes. At this point, you're done. You could use the Move tool to continue to move that moon around until you find just the right spot. I kind of like it right, uh, right about there. Now, if you were to move the moon around and the clouds don't look quite right, you can always go back into the Layer Options dialog box and modify the slider adjustments. Uh, those changes are parametric, so you can go in and out as many times as you want to modify them. One thing I would like to show you before we wrap this tutorial up is exactly what's going on here. Now I already mentioned what the this layer is doing but as far as the underlying layer goes what it's doing is this first adjustment which is 111 is saying any luminance value that is 111 or lower should punch through the layer above i.e. the moon layer. So anything that is 111 or lower should show through the layer above it. Anything from 118 to 255 would not show through. And again, we have the transition between 111 and 118 where we get that smooth transition. Also worth mentioning is if you were working with let's say a moon with a light background. If that were the case, you would adjust this slider and move it left to remove the white background around your moon. Also, if you were working with white clouds or clouds that were lighter than the moon, you would, you would be working with this slider and again moving it to the left. So basically you would just reverse the logic of what I've already gone through here. Alright, I'm going to click cancel here. And that wraps up this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, you can always visit photoblogstop.com where you can find a variety of tutorials and videos online. Thank you.